When I first got it, I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. Was it gonna be too much like a track bike? Was it gonna be big and clunky and not fun to ride? Matt Reyes could ride anything. It's almost like you can't trust someone who's that good at riding. <laughs> Jackson here. Today's video is all about the MASH slumworm frame. I think it's one of the coolest fixed gears to come out in the last couple of years. So I got this frame when it first came out. I took it to some really cool places to film for the movie Last Try, which if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I know I'm a broken record about it. Uh, so I'm going to do a little build video, get into some of the part lists, and then do a long-term review, talk about some of the things that I liked, some of the things that I didn't like, and ultimately why I'm not running it as a daily driver anymore. Let's get into it, stick around. Can't decide if I want my hair out or in or out or in. Last night I went out to my first indoor concert in two years and got a little too litty. I gotta make this video, today's gonna be the only good day this weekend, it's gonna rain tomorrow. Boo, what do you think about new bikes? Matt Reyes signature mash frame. I'm really excited about it. I've been wanting a sort of trick track build for a while now and this one fit the bill perfectly. I was so excited about it. I bought it, this myself. It's the most expensive fixed gear frame I've ever purchased, which is just crazy. Went with the raw, the size large 53, which is weird to call a size 53 a large. <laughs> it's not scary. It's okay. It's okay, bud. Look how pretty this box is. Let's get this puppy open. Fuck. That was not a YouTube stunt at all. That was for real, for real on accident. This thing just does not want to stay up. Got a nice little parts bag. Mash seat post clamp, mash headset. Back to the frame, I'm a little scared. Such a cool little detail. I also like that it's square. I don't know why. Mash head tube badge. This thing is the craziest and probably the part that I'm most skeptical about on this frame is this crazy, they're calling it a chain stay. Gusset, more tire clearance, but then also have room for your chainring. Last piece, cannot have this fall over again. Focus, you can do it. Can you see that? This fork is light. I like how they did a taper on the legs. Nice little mash cut out right there. It looks like they based this thing pretty much exactly off of the Fu Manchu. Let's get to building. That's pretty party. All right, I gotta do my, my thumbnail. Yeah. Welcome to my super messy workshop. First up on the list and probably the most ex Oh my. New bars, these are some pro taper. I think they're like one inch rise. Going again with this build with sort of a silver and black theme. So thought this would be the perfect bar for it. Some nice gray grips, match the frame. Thought it'd be kind of cool. I thought I bought more new stuff, but I actually don't really have a whole lot. Nothing fancy, didn't do Thompson. I'm gonna be stealing quite a bit for my squid. Take an old saddle that I have. This one's the, I always recommend the Volt, but this one is the WTB Silverado, which I like this one too. It's actually a pretty similar shape. It's just like a little bit more flat, I think. I think I'm gonna chop my bars. I'm gonna go pretty skinny with them. I wanna be able to bar spin really well. I'm gonna use one tape length shorter than 720. That looks really short. So I've taken my squid apart. It's really sad to see it taken apart, but I was very curious to see what these two geometries look like next to each other. These bikes are pretty similar. I mean, they're both like kind of traditional track geometry with bigger tire clearance. Got the bottom brackets lined up, but the slumworm frame is quite a bit shorter, which is nice for having a short wheelbase. The seat tube is obviously a lot shorter on the mash, and the mash is slightly longer, which I thought was pretty curious, but the actual dropouts end up being at the same spot because the mash is a lot steeper, 
and the squid is pretty slack. It's obviously not very scientific, but it's kind of just interesting to put them side by side. Put this right here. Eh, that's not bad. Gotta get this fancy pantsy product shot. These are some nice slow mos Oh yeah. Do the pan in, do the pull back. All around the wheels, nice circle with the wheels. Do the little twisty guy. Deadlies are not aesthetic unless they're orange. Woo! All right, player. I'll see you soon. Right. I wanted to do like a nice beauty montage, building it up, nice close-ups, all that stuff. Told Chase I'd meet him in an hour. I'm gonna save the beauty montage shots for after it's built. I'll film it on another day. I shouldn't even be talking right now. Let's get to it. I'm gonna go a little bit wider. Um, also, pro tip: if you don't have cutting oil, just use a little bit of chain lube. Jizzy chain lube. Thanks for watching the channel for all these awesome bike mechanic tips. One other pro tip, I recently ponied up and got the Park Tool Saw Guide. It's way better than using those little rotary blades. Faster, quicker. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Affiliate link if you want to support the channel. I don't know if this is a good sound or a bad sound, but I like the sound. I went for less than I wanted to and that's still a lot of bar. Some nice gray grips and they actually, I think it'll look cool on the frame. That's how I do. Time to cut the fork. Here goes nothing. It'd be sick even to put an angle set on the track lacrosse so that I have an even slacker head too. Finally, holy. <gasps> now for the stupid star nut. I think most star nuts use like a four, but this one actually uses a five. It would be dope to have a bike that only uses one Allen wrench. I mean, that's pretty much what BMX bikes do. Oh, I pinched my finger. Maybe I should look up a video on how to do this. Stall star nut without tools. Here. Hey, I've just got to get it in just a tad more. These ones are stupid giant zip ties, but I just pull the zip ties out. Oh, look at that. That is sick looking. Thompson's always w were the best back in the day because they had this two bolt, but now it seems like every brand has the two bolt system. And I don't know if that's just because it was like patented or I just change out these spacers right here. Gotta pop on these spacers and I'll be able to run this on this bike. That is looking like a whole bike. So I usually just go with BMX chains. Got a flat tire, this is tubeless. So I'm gonna see if I can get some air in there. Bacon right here. I'm calling this one done for right now. Wow. This bike is sick. It's small. It is small looking. My tires are completely flat, but this is sick. Look at that, so sick. That's it for the build section. I didn't do a great job filming this, so thanks for sticking with me this far. Let's get into some of the parts that I'm running on this bike. Before we go any further, I wanna give a big shout out to the mayor of Fixie Town, Matt Reyes himself. He hasn't been posting content on the internet, for a while, I respect that. He's left a lasting impression on the scene. He has for years and just wanna give him a big shout out. Come back when you're ready. We miss you. So if you've seen the Cortec build video or the squid bike check, you're familiar with most of the parts on this bike because I've recycled nearly all of them. I wish that I could have all of these builds at the same time, but unfortunately space and money are a constraint that I just can't get around. And uh, you know, fixed gear YouTube ain't paying the bills. So for wheels, I'm running the WTB iTuff rims laced up to level hubs. Level hubs are a really cool direct drive hub system. I made a whole video about it. Go check it out, link in the description. For gear ratio on this bike, I'm running 4317, which sounds easy, but with the larger tires, it's still easy, but it's not as easy as you'd think as like comparing it directly to like say a, a 23C700 build. I built this up for doing tricks and just being a nice all around bike. So it is on the easier side, but for me, it works great. It pedals nice in the flats. And if I do go down a hill and spin out, so be it. For the drivetrain, I'm running a BMX setup. I have resist 160 millimeter cranks hooked up to a profile 
144 BCD spider, and that's hooked up to an AARN ring and a modified Sagino 75 bash guard. <laughs> Head over to the squid build video if you wanna learn a little bit more about the BMX crank setup. 160 millimeter cranks is absurdly short, but I like it for bar spins, especially on this setup because the top tube is a little bit shorter. Stick around for the review portion. I'll explain in more detail why this is important. So when I originally built this bike, I had the Panaracer Gravel King SKs, and then I ultimately switched over to the Specialized Sawtooths. I'm not a big fan of the Gravel King SKs for this build just because they're a little bit more tread than I need, and the Sawtooths are a little bit more fast rolling. They also have lasted a really long time. For me, on a setup like this where I'm doing tricks, dropping off curbs, riding down stairs, but I still wanna be able to get around relatively easily. A 38C is the perfect compromise. It gives me just a little bit of cushion for those curb hits, but I don't feel sluggish at all pedaling this bike around. For stem, I'm running the Thompson 70 mil, which is a nice middle ground for me. And then I have the Pro Taper bars. I feel like that's the whole part list but I can't totally remember because I feel like I've done this bike check so many times. Let's get into the long-term review. Before we do though, I wanna make a disclosure. I wanna compare this bike to my Squid and my Master Bike Co. Cortec, both of which I have personal ties. If you follow this channel, you know that I worked with Squid in the past. They helped me and the rest of the Fodies get on some so easy frames. Master Bike Co. is run and owned by Kareem, who's a personal friend. He hooked me up with the Cortec after I helped him break his Achilles. Shout out Kareem. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I purchased this frame myself. I was that hyped on it and I admire MASH, I like MASH, I don't have a personal relationship with them, although I would love for that to change if you're watching. All of that to say is that I'm gonna try to be as objective as possible, but I'm not totally impervious to bias. The fixed gear community is small, um, and I think the brands that are in it still are in it to make cool products and support the community. So I went and looked through a bunch of old footage of when I first got this frame, just so I could put myself in the mindset of when I first got this bike, because I haven't ridden it in a while. So I rode this bike for a year. I rode it while I was filming for Last Try. I took it to France. I took it to New York. I abused it all over Salt Lake City on track lacrosse, doing tricks. And so this bike, was pretty much my main bike for a long period of time. Because I haven't ridden this bike for a while, I had a hard time remembering what it felt like to ride. And I actually think that that's a good thing. There was nothing that really stood out or bothered me about the bike. It just was a blank slate. One of the things that I really like about the MASH Slumworm frame is the sizing. For me, the size large just fit perfect. It was a little bit on the smaller side. It felt super nimble but it also was easy to pedal around. It didn't feel like I was riding a clown bike. I believe there's four sizes. This frame size ended up being a little bit smaller than my Cortec, which for me made some tricks a little bit easier and other tricks a little bit harder. The Squid feels a lot bigger. It's a lot more of a stable bike, which is good if you're doing track lacrosse. For me, where I wanna be able to ride this bike and throw it around a little bit, I like the more nimble, playful feel. The biggest con on the MASH frame is pedal overlap. I've talked to a couple of people who have this bike in a smaller size, which means a shorter top tube, and they have a little bit more difficulty doing bar spins. The bike is nice and nimble, compact, but that comes at the cost of having bar spin clearance. You're gonna have to be more careful with where your foot is in the pedal stroke when you're throwing a bar spin. Otherwise, you're gonna hit your toes and it's not gonna spin all the way around. For me, on the large, I didn't really have too much of an issue with it. I'm also running 160 millimeter cranks, which is incredibly short, and so that definitely makes a difference as well. This is one advantage that the Cortec has over the Slumworm frame. It's a little bit more refined in bar spin clearance in all sizes. I really like that this frame has a down tube gusset and a top tube gusset. I put this frame through a lot and I didn't have any issues. 
I also didn't have any issues with the chain stay gusset that I was skeptical about. To me, I really like the solution. It allows you to run the bigger chain ring and also get nice tire clearance. I was worried about the rear end bending because of that chain stay gusset. I personally did a lot of nose 180 tricks on this bike, which can be really hard on a rear end and had no issues. Held up great. Master Bike Co. is doing a similar thing with their rear chain stay and it seems to be working. No matter what bike you're on, even a BMX bike, if you ride it hard, it's gonna fail at a certain point. It's gonna bend, it's gonna crack. It's just what happens. One thing that I really like about the MASH is that it has internal headset cups. Both the Squid and the Cortec have external press fit cups, which I'm a fixie fool. If I'm gonna be running an external headset cup, you know it has to be the Chris King, which means I gotta spend an extra $200. I can't go without it. So I appreciate that they have the internal cups they're easier to install. It actually came with the headset even. So I like that part about it. It's a little bit easier to install. Don't have to go to a bike shop. There are a lot of aesthetic details that I really appreciate about the Slumworm frame. I really like the square seat stay bridge with the MASH logo, also the head tube badge. Every little detail is thought out. The fork is really nice looking. I love the way that it tapers down. It's really sleek. There is one thing that I don't like about the aesthetics of the Slumworm frame. One little quibble I have with the mash frame is the sloped top tube. It's sloped just slightly. It maybe goes down one inch from the headset cup to where the seat post is. And I don't know that that one inch really does anything for rideability, but for me, it makes it look less like a track bike. And I want this bike to look like a track bike that secretly can do anything that you throw at it. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. It's such a slight complaint. For me, if I'm getting into that level of details with things I either like or don't like, it just points out to me that this frame really is just well built. All in all, I really like the MASH Slumworm frame. It completely exceeded my expectations. When I first got it, I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. Was it gonna be too much like a track bike? Was it gonna be too much like the old school FGFS bikes that were just big and clunky and not fun to ride? But they really dialed it in. They did a good job with the geometry. MASH had never come out with frame and Matt Reyes could ride anything and make it look good. So you can't, it's almost like you can't trust someone who's that good at riding for geometry, because you know they're just gonna be good at anything that they ride. But they did a really good job with this bike. To compare the MASH Slumworm frame to the Squid and the Cortec, I think it fits perfectly in the middle. It's a great all-arounder and it doesn't go any one direction too far. The Cortec had a ton of hype built up around it and there is gonna be another version that comes out soon, but the Slumworm frames are still available right now. I think there's a couple sizes. I really like this bike a lot. I think you should definitely check it out. If you're looking to build a trick track, burly track bike setup, I think that this is a really good option. I also wanna mention that the Slumworm frame could be a good option for a track lacrosse build. Wasn't really designed to be one, but for me, the only real requirements are good tire clearance and durability. This frame has both. And the Squid So Easy isn't currently in stock right now. So if you're looking to build something up, this could be a good option. Also, I gotta pause and give a really big shout out to my longtime sponsor, Rough Bike Co. They're coming out with a new fixed gear freestyle frame, which if you're looking for something that's maybe a little bit more burly, more trick oriented than this trick track genre, definitely check out Rough Bike Co. So I'm not riding this frame anymore. I took all the parts to build up my Cortec and I've decided to stick with that bike for a couple reasons. The biggest is it's just a little bit more trick track oriented. The longer top tube allows for bar spins a little bit easier. There's also something about the Cortec that just gives this OG trick track vibes. I feel like I'm back in 2009, 2010, hanging out at the basketball court, doing bar spins, doing keel spins. It's part of why I put an aero spoke on there. So as much as I complain about having an external headset on there, it's something that I do like, love-hate relationship. I love the Cortec, I've gotten really used to the geometry, but if I ever had to go back to the Slumworm frame, I totally would. It's like the new school smasher. Thank you all for watching, I hope this was helpful. Go check out the build videos that I mentioned. Go watch the movie Last Try. I also released all of the behind the scenes 
uh, for the clips that I filmed on this bike. So go check that out. Link in the description. Check out fulledgang.com. Got new gear dropping. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.